when we talk about professional marks in all of these P exams, regardless of which exam you take, professional marks are essential. They may be not so essential in strategic business reporting because there are only four of them, but for all the other exams, they are. Why? Well, because uh, you have 100 mocks in your exam and 20 of them are professional. And judging by the fact that before, when there were not so many professional mocks, people would score marginal mocks in their professional exams, such as, let's say, 50, 55 maybe, not 70, not 80. So this means that uh, if you just completely lose professional marks, there is just no chance for you of scoring your pass rate, right? So you need to take these professional marks. The good thing is that uh, it is actually almost impossible to score technical marks without scoring professional marks because uh, you got your technical marks for the ability to explain your answer, to explain your thoughts. And when you do that, you earn professional marks. But there are uh, useful tricks that we can apply here to ensure that we score professional marks. And I know that because, well, I've been teaching these exams for, well, since 2015 and 2016, and I'm a tutor for, uh, I have experience with um, several working knowledge providers, including Platinum One, so I could have to attend those meetings when they tell us, the ICC itself tells us about professional marks and what students did good or poorly. So I I know, I know what is that that the examiner is thinking that they're testing. So let us start from that. Uh, well, from time-wise perspective, okay, so uh, we are going to talk about uh, the main ideas of how to score marks in any of your professional exams. That is very important. That is going to be the base. Then we are going to talk about professional marks for the exams other than SBL and SBR. Then we will talk about SBL and finally about SBR. Uh, but even if you do not take this exam eh, at the moment, it's still important for you to listen just for, for your future success. So when we talk about um, professional exams, the overriding idea of any professional paper is that you are an employee, you are an advisor who receives huge compensation, like you receive tons of money, and companies hire you to provide some insight. And they do not pay you for just citing the Wikipedia. They can go into Google or ChatGPT or whatever source they want and look for the model uh, for the formula themselves. No, what they want you to do, they want you to apply the knowledge to the organization itself with all of these characteristics. And just to give you an example, well, okay, so long time ago, me and my younger sister went to France, to Paris, and she got food poisoning, and it was a disaster because she was puking blood. That was That's how bad it was. And we called a doctor, and the doctor came, and he didn't have any pills on them. And, uh, well, <laughs> he, he just gave us the diagnosis, and we had to wait for them for two hours and pay 200 euros. Uh, well, and the doctor said, okay, look, uh, your eye is, your sister's eyes are not dry. Uh, well, your, your sister's lips are dry. So this means that the high dehydration has started. So you need to rehydrate her. Uh, however, the eyes are not uh, dry. This means that the high dehydration is within five percentages. This means that it is enough to do these procedures, but you do not need to go and uh, engage in some drastic measures. Okay, so this, um, your sister has a temperature like that. This means that, and this means that you should do that. And you know what? I was willing to buy this $200 because I got a result that was specific to the case. That was specific to the, my sister, uh, who in my eyes was dying almost. Uh, and I 
thought it relevant to me. If the doctor instead came to me and they just said that mm, you do not need to do the, anything, just take this uh, pill, go to the pharmacy and buy it, I would not be happy. I would not be happy with the 200 euros spent and I would never recommend that doctor ever again. So the same with the business and working and you working as a consultant. If you just take the theory, you do not get money. You, you might get the money according to the contract, but uh, you will not be liked by your employer, by your customer. But if you cite whatever is going with the company, okay, so for example, Look, you are working in retail industry. This means that you had cash problems. This means that uh, you have these shareholders. This means that. Then this means that in the eyes of people who pay for your services, you are actually explaining them what is meant and they are more willing to pay you a huge amount of money. And that is what ACCA wants from you. ACCA wants you to promote the um the importance of acca qualification by being a good employee by being a good consultant so acca says uh when we task you when we qualify you we want you to show these qualities uh so that you would apply them at your real work and um, again so what does it mean it means that regardless of the paper, um, the paper you take, what you need to do, you need to um, to cite the scenario. Well, I mean, you can just copy and paste that and maybe correct a bit so that, you know, it's English. Then you cite what it means in terms of theory, and then you give a conclusion. Well, let me give you an example from strategic business reporting. Uh, so let us take IS-16, and IX 16 uh, is uh, about uh, your property plant equipment. So the question is whether you should capitalize the cost of training employees to operate that uh, machinery that you bought. Uh, you uh, say that the company paid that much money for training that employees. Uh, so you cite whatever happened. Then you say what it means from um, uh, the point of view of the standard. So you say, uh, however, according to IS-16, only the expenses that are needed to bring the asset to the location and condition can be capitalized, and training of employees is not that. And then you give the conclusion according to the standard. So, uh, well, as such, the training costs should not be capitalized. If we talk about, let's say, advanced performance management exam, when you need to talk about management, you would um, cite something like, um, the business is owned by brothers who do not want to participate in the management and instead they want to serve uh, uh, in Australia. Uh, what does it mean from the uh, in terms of the theory? This means that although they have high power because they can vote out management, they have little interest because they do not uh, they are not willing to look into the operations of the company. And the conclusion, as such, they are uh, uh, this means that from the point of view of Mandelos metrics. So. Uh, that is how we write your answers. This is like the base case, regardless of what exam you take. And you need to do that because well, later we will see how that is going to um, correspond with how you earn professional marks. Then, um, <laughs> this is a tricky thing about the exam, that uh, in the professional level exam, you are not required to provide the right answer. Well, literally, you do not need to write the right answer. Why? Well, because the correct answer can give you, well, maybe one mark, if any. Yes, but if you look at the question, the question is um, usually formulated for something around nine marks. So what you get your marks for, for uh, looking at the scenario and saying, on one hand, on the other hand, on one hand, it's good. On the other hand, it's uh, it is not good. On one hand, it works. On the other hand, it work. It does not work. On one hand, it is beneficial. On the other hand, it is not beneficial. Well, uh, this is especially important 
for these knowledge-based exams such as uh, well, when we talk about strategic business reporting, you are asked to provide some accounting treatment and there is some tricky situation. Well, for example, uh, you do not know whether this should be recognized as intangible asset or not. Well, when we talk about cryptocurrencies, for example, so you say on one hand, it looks like cryptocurrency and this citation means that it does not. Uh, this citation from the tax, this part of the scenario means that maybe it is. This means that maybe it is not. And, and again, we use citation. What does it mean in terms of our theory and conclusion? So you score marks by saying what each and every piece of scenario means. And it doesn't really matter whether your answer in the end is do or do not do, right or wrong, good or bad, mm, recognize or do not recognize, because that is only one mark, if any. And usually, if you look at the mocking scheme, the mocking scheme is going to provide you more marks that you can score. So you would be... Um, given market scheme, something like that. Uh, so, for example, benefits up to, let's say, six marks, drawbacks up to six marks, and the total maximum, let's say, 10 marks. So, uh, like, by providing your thoughts, you can, you could theoretically cap 12 marks, but you have a cap of 10 marks, meaning that uh, even if your conclusion is not right, by um, uh, by commenting on more parts of the scenario, you will be really you will be it will be possible for you to gain the highest mark. Okay, now the next one is that uh, you need to explain. You are given marks for the logical thoughts. So as such, you need to use the words because, that is because, blah, 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 as such, it means the following, uh, blah, 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 therefore, it means that because you need to give this logical thought because you are given mocks and paid huge amount of money for your ability to draw conclusions. Oh, uh, so when we talk about how to write an answer to score marks, these are the basic ideas that you need to remember. So, and I want you to uh, see the following examples of how we need to formulate the answer. Um, so, uh, the thing is that when you write something, you need to make sure that your conclusion is in the same paragraph as in uh, as your uh, presumptions and your citations from the text. So broadly speaking, when we talk about um, uh, how the answer is formulated, it can be formulated as, okay, uh, this is the number of sentences that support this conclusion. This is um, the number of sentences that uh, supports the other, um, the other side, the other view of the story, and that is the answer. And that is how you often see the uh, model answer be formulated. But from the perspective of the real exam, of the stress factor, of you know that inability of the students sometimes express their thoughts so that the person who reads them can understand what is written there, I strongly advise you to give the conclusion right after your thoughts that you are trying to explain. And uh, as such, please pay attention that it is in the same paragraph. And let me give you an example. So look, the examiner is reading your answer and they're reading it like that. It is raining. Okay, that is the end of the paragraph. Is there a conclusion? No, it's just a citation from that scenario. So we do not get any marks for that. Uh, it is cold outside. Is there any conclusion? Is there any logical thought? No. It's just something stating the fact. Uh, I need to put warm waterproof shoes. Oh, okay. You need to prove, uh, put warm waterproof shoes. And that is what is in the answer is like the conclusion. But in this very sentence, we do not have any justification of this conclusion. So it will not win any marks. Okay. And what if a person wrote something like that? It is raining. Mm, no, 
conclusion, right? So no marks. It is cold outside. I need to put warm shoes. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely uh, correct because, yeah, we can see that it is cold outside. I need to put warm shoes. Yes, we need to put warm shoes if it is cold. So that brings you one mark. Let me give you another example. It is raining. Mm, no conclusion, no mock. It is cold outside. I need to put warm waterproof shoes. That is not technically correct because if it is cold outside, it is not necessarily that you need warm waterproof shoes. It may be you just, mm, it might as well be that you just need warm shoes, just normal warm shoes. So that does not bring you any mocks. And if you wrote your sentence like that, it is raining. Mm -hmm. That is one idea. It is cold outside. It is cold outside. That is the other citation from the scenario. Good. Uh, keep reading in the paragraph. I need to put warm waterproof shoes. Oh, that is a conclusion. And look, that conclusion correctly concludes the two sentences that we written before. Oh, so that is going to bring you two marks. See, that is how your work is marked. As such, please make sure that you not only state that you use the word such as therefore because, well, ideally, uh, I would put here therefore or something as such uh, to stress that this is a conclusion. And uh, please make sure that your conclusion is, in without, is within the same paragraph. And that is uh, what we are going to talk about in uh, professional marks. So please stay with me okay you just we need to start with that so that you are not confused later all right the next thing that you need to know is to mind the verb of the question look uh there is a verb list list means well just name them and that was applicable for exams such as uh assurance you know like format f8 when you have to list the procedures to test, for example, cash and cash equivalents. Yes, and for that, for list, you would get 0.5 marks. But if your question, if your verb is not list, then just listing stuff will not bring you marks. And in professional level exams, it is most likely that your verb is going to sound like evaluate. What does evaluate mean? Evaluate means that if you have numbers, and numbers uh, that relate to this question, you need to calculate and uh, need to give conclusion. Uh, if there are no numbers, then this means that you need to talk about uh, positive and negative uh, aspects of something. Evaluate the use of this model. Well, on one hand, this model works in this very case, in this very company. So we, we cite the scenario and give conclusions to citations. On the other hand, it does not work. On one hand, this black Scholes option pricing model is great. On the other hand, it does not, it does not work. Uh, assess. Assess is uh, more or less like uh, evaluate, but it is not as strong. Usually assess uh, is um, followed by assess the appropriateness. When we talk about assess the appropriateness, we need to um, understand that there is no model, that there is no technique that is good 100% of the way. So um, uh, the example that I like to show is assess the appropriateness appropriateness of red dress. Mm -hmm. Assess the appropriateness of me wearing that dra red dress. Okay, uh, the red dress cannot be appropriate or not appropriate by itself. It is appropriate and not appropriate um, in the situation. Okay, what is the situation? I'm going on a picnic for my corporate event. Okay, let's ask ourselves the appropriateness of me wearing that red dress. Uh, okay. That is my poor drawing skills. Uh, so on one hand, this red dress really becomes me and I will look the best at the pictures. So I should wear this dress on this corporate event. On the other hand, uh, this uh, mm, dress 
uh, well, I cannot wash it in the washer. So after the picnic, I will obviously, well, there will be some styes, some, I don't know, grease from barbecue. Uh, so I will have to take it to the dry cleaning and it's going to cost me a fortune. So no, because it's costly. On one hand, in this very trance, it is easy for me to move my arms and lungs and the, um, if I need to participate in, uh, you know, some um some events some competitions then i can be the first so in one hand uh it uh, allows me to move on the other hand it is quite hard uh in it so uh, if uh, uh the weather is too warm then i just uh, uh will be all sweaty on one hand this dress is good because uh, what else is good about this dress? Uh, uh, oh, the, because uh, well, it covers all my body and I will not have any mosquito bites. Oh, and so that is my view of mosquito. That is a scary mosquito. On the other hand, it is bad because, well, I have no idea why it is bad, okay? So, but you get the point, right? So you need to say on one hand, on the other hand, on one hand, on the other hand. And then the end, quite often you can uh, draw different conclusions so one person say ah, what the hell will uh, wear it and the other person can say no, no there's too much hustle so no so that is assess the appropriateness discuss means that we need to uh just uh, well we, it's kind of assess the appropriateness but assess uh, the appropriateness and evaluate uh, implies that there's going to be some balance between uh, yes and no's. And discuss means that we just need to say what uh, each and every proposition in the scenario means. And the such it may as well be that our answer is going to be imbalanced. So we are going to talk only about bad stuff or only about good stuff or may, um, like the majority of our sentences will be about good or bad. So discuss, uh, uh, it's not so, so balanced, maybe not balanced. Uh, another verb that we might be using is illustrate. Illustrate is when you need to give examples. Uh, preferably, they will come from your scenario. This is the best case scenario. Uh, however, it may be that they have to come from your idea of how you uh, understand the theory. Well, for example, when we talk about uh, taxes, you can be asked to give uh, examples of, uh, um, for example, tax exemptions that can be applied here. Uh, if we talk about audit, there may be some audit procedures that can be applied here, and we will illustrate how they will be applied here. However, the question that you need to ask yourself, are you sure that the question asks you to give a piece of advice? Are there anything, is there anything that tells you, advice, suggest what the company should do? Because quite often it's not the case. Uh, and when you say should, you lose your marks. And you know that in real life, we should not only criticize, we should suggest, forget that. When we talk about professional level exams, if you're not asked to suggest, you do not suggest because you will lose your marks. Uh, why is that? Well, well, because if someone comes to a company and asks them to evaluate something that they have, let's say, controlled, then this is about evaluation and the suggestion. Uh, for suggestion, you need to pay a separate bill, and this is a separate report that a person needs to write. So that is one. So please be very attentive. But of course, that can differ slightly between the exams. Uh, there can be verbs that stay a little bit aside, there, but I would like to know them. These verbs are comment and briefly comment on the result of calculation. So briefly comment means that uh, it's uh, one mark, uh, maybe two, not more. Comment is something between two and three marks. Uh, usually when we evaluate, when someone asks us to evaluate, we need to make a conclusion in the end. So for example, MPV is positive. And when we say positive, we say slightly positive or, um, uh, or significantly in, above zero or below zero, or slightly below zero. And this means the following. Okay, uh, but still, if you want to briefly comment, then this is uh, something that you need to do within two months. 
And that is very important. I mean, like this is going to be a thought that, oh, spoiler alert, that's maybe you've never think about that before, but that is the key to your success. The key to your success is that when you took your fundamental level, uh, you were asked write as many sentences as you can, write as much as you can, because you are not punished for own ideas. And that was absolutely relevant for fundamental level exams. Why? That is because in fundamental level exams, you have many test questions. And test questions are not that time consuming as written questions. And as such, you would have enough time to write, uh, well, just in case, or maybe that. That is not the case with professional level exams. Why? Ask anyone you know how much time they have left at the end of the exam. Oh, ask another question. How many questions they were not able to attempt, not to solve, but to attempt during the exam? And usually you will hear something that uh, if a question, if the exam has three questions, for example, like in the case of my beloved APM, there are three questions, 50 markers, uh, 25 and 25, usually, people get only half of the last question that they, that they lived for the last uh, done. And they have no time to answer, let's say, question three, part C and uh, part B. Uh, that is going to happen for each and every exam. Think about yourself, about your past experience with professional level exams. Have you had any time left? No, you have not. Meaning that uh, for the time allowance that you've got, let it be three hours and 15 minutes, like the usual case, you have the ability to write that many sentences because this is just physically possible to write that many sentences. And if you start writing something that is not needed in the first question, so instead of spending this amount of time, you spend that amount of time, then this means that you are not able to attempt not solve correctly, but attempt one of the questions. And the more time you waste on part, let's say, A, the last time you have for part B. And uh, this means that you will need to score 50 marks, not out of 100 marks, but out of 80 or 90 marks that you've attempted. And that is really hard to do. Meaning that you need to pay attention to the marks and write only according to the marking scheme. And that is why this um, um, understanding of comment and briefly comment is important. So let's say briefly comment says that it's two mark stops, so it's four sentences stops. For comment, it's six sentences stops. Uh, well, depending on whether they are long or whether they are short. So that is like, uh, like the base case technique for writing your answer. And now we are going to come to the professional marks. So for papers, uh, we start with papers other than as we are an SBL, uh, because they have many uh, much in common. Okay, so when we talk about professional marks, so uh, starting September 2022, 20, right? Um, I'm always confused with the, what is the year. We have 20 out of 100 professional marks. What are these professional marks given for? They are given for your communication, analysis, evaluation, skepticism, and commercial acumen. And um, let us talk about how to score the marks. Communication. Communication are professional marks that are given for report format and structure. So in questions such as, let's say, advanced financial management, advanced profession, uh, performance management, you will have your part A question that says, write a report. Ooh. This means that you need to write a report. So you literally get one mark for saying, report to, and who is that, to the CEO of uh, some ABC company. Then you say, form and uh, advisor or accountant, please do not write your name. Then you say the date and there should not be any specific, uh, you know, any date that is personal. So you can just write the exam date and just put access. Then you write subject 
when subject is something that fits within one line. If it does not fit one line, it is not a subject, it is an introduction. So uh, on usually you can write a subject that sounds more or less like your exam, the exam you're attempting. So for example, when we're talking about professional performance management uh, in question I, there are 50 marks. And of course, the uh, questions that are there, they come from different parts of the syllabus. And it's really hard to unite them under a single heading and a single subject. So we just try to write all performance management. Uh, if we talk about financial management exam, so you will have NPV, then you will need to talk about, let's say, dividend policy and so on, because there are 50 marks and the examiner is thinking, oh, how, how can they write questions for 50 marks? So they have to pull the topics from different parts of the syllabus. So for advanced financial management, you can say all financial management at ABC company. Then you need to write introduction. Introduction is when you take the requirement and rewrite that in, uh, well, you know, you write that as a text. So, for example, if the requirement says uh, calculate NPV and uh, comment on the acceptability of the project, uh, and uh, comment on the, the risk structure of the company, so you would say. This report calculates, provides an MPV calculation. Then it talks about acceptability of the project. Uh, then it discusses a risk profile of the company. This is followed by. After that, uh, then, and finally, so you use this glue word such as then, after that, finally. This is followed and so on. Then you need to write your answer. And when you write your answer, you need to put the uh, uh, kind of like the name of the sub questions, um, not the latter, the index of the sub question. So, for example, if your requirement says A, B, C, D, so it will be A, B, C, D. If it says one, two, three, then it's going to be one, two, three. And you need this caption as uh, in report style. A report style means that there uh, should be either a verb like uh, noun, a verb like noun is something like, uh, let's say, um, uh, NPV calculation. Uh, calculation is a, a verb derived noun, calculation, or for example, um, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, control management or evaluation. Evaluation is a noun that comes from verb. Or alternatively, you can just start with the word uh, on, on NPV in the company, on NPV calculation, uh, uh, on the use of NPV in the company, on the use of the model. So it's either that or that usually. And then you write your answer. And in the end, you, in the end of the very, very uh, I question, so big question, which asks you to provide a report, you would make a conclusion. So to sum up, and then the conclusion will look very much like your introduction. And so there will be no new words. There will be no kind of, uh, nothing new. Everything is supposed to be in your uh, part of you know of this uh, answer. Uh, so uh, there you say uh, to sum up. Uh, uh, NPV is positive, so the project should go ahead. However, all the factors should be considered. Uh, the um, risk mitigation strategies are appropriate, or risk mitigation strategies need a final revision, and so on. So that is your report and form and structure. And uh, what is important there is that you use headings. Don't forget to use these headings and subheadings so that your uh, answer is structured. That is how you get your mark. So uh, basically, for your caption, for your report part, you get one mark. Oh, that's the easiest mark you can score them without actually starting preparing for the exam. Then you get somewhat like one mark for this structure. Uh, you need to use hidden and um, sub hidden. So, like let's say within part I, you might be asked to talk about advantages and disadvantages. So you would have a sub hidden that is called advantages, and you will have a sub hidden that is called disadvantages. All right. So that is hidden sub hidden uh, introduction.
then you give uh, you get your marks for the effectiveness of communication. Effectiveness of communication means that you are answering the question set, not the question that you think uh, that is given to you. That is uh, actually a pain for the student because quite mm, when uh, we ask students what were the question in the exam, they tell the name of the theory, but actually this is not the theory, but the application of the theory that is tested. Uh, well, uh, anyways, we need to see how the question is formulated and make sure that we are answering the right question. So if the question is asking about advantages, we say we talk about advantages only. If it is asking about disadvantages, we talk only about disadvantages. If it is asking about implementation problems, we talk about implementation problems and not the use, the problems of the use of the model. And uh, also, if we are asked specifically, and usually that is the, the criterion that is uh, given in your exam, in your scenario. So in your scenario, there will be something. Uh, at this very stage, the CEO has suggested that only three indicators need to be offered. So if it is sad that only three indicators need to be offered, it doesn't matter how, <laughs> how bad the indicators you, you offered are. You need to offer three, not two, not four, not this or that. Three indicators exactly. If you are asked to offer not more than not more than three, then it may be one, two, three, but not four. If you offer four indicators, you lose your professional mark on communication. And that is so very sad. Please do not do that. So please read that. Please read the question uh, specification that is in the scenario, not only the part that is in the requirement. Also, if no metrics need to be offered, so if you're not asked for metrics, and even more, if that question specifically tells you that no metrics are needed, or for example, no, oh, no discussion of disadvantages are needed, then if you start doing that, you lose your professional marks. That is sad, because you lose by doing something, by making some extra effort. So that is uh, how it works. And uh, what is important is that this relates to each and every question in your exam. The report structure, this report structure, this relates to only to the question that asks you specifically to write a report. If the question does not write a report, then um, the layout, so the use of headings and subheadings, the effectiveness of communication is going to matter. So on the uh, this the report had an in, in introduction and a conclusion are something that can be or can not be dependent on the question. All right, the next uh, type of metrics, uh, um, types of aspects that we need to remember about communication is a style, language, and clarity of your justification. So <laughs> appropriate tone of report uh, of response. Quite often, students say that, uh, uh, that they manipulated the records, that they, they stole, that they did something bad. Well, uh, uh, please do not like employ, do not accuse, try, try not to accuse. If you can, try saying that it can be suggested, it may as well be, and so on. So please... Uh, have a proper tone. A proper tone means that uh, we also need to use the uh, third person communication style. So this means that we say the company, the business, the organization, the management, the board, the employees, and so on. We do not say something like I know I. We do not say we No, We do not say us. All right, so that is in like the company, the report, the management. Uh, in some older versions of exams, you might see in model answer this I, we, and us. But please do not do that. Uh, presentation of calculation. So that is absolutely important that you are going to use, uh, if you are given spreadsheets, not only the text editor, but spreadsheets, that you use spreadsheets for calculations unless they are super simple 
uh, oh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Unless they're super simple, unless they are just A divided by B equals C. So please do not calculate on PB or IRR in your tax document, in your tax processor. So uh, when we say about some calculation, so you would see, you would write something. Um, as seen in appendix one of spreadsheets or in spreadsheets, and then you write the conclusion on the result. So, for example, NPV is positive, meaning, and so on. And in spreadsheets, you will have something like that, Appendix 1, and the name of whatever you are doing, like, let's say, NPV calculation. And when you do the calculation, the calculations need to be properly presented, meaning that you do not just do A2 plus B1 divided by C3. Now, if you look at model answer, at ACC model answer, you will see that they put um, all parts of the calculations in a separate row so that it is uh, seen how that is calculated. So, for example, oh, when we talk about uh, large site, uh, what can we uh, say? What can, what can we talk about? Oh, let's calculate some cost of a union, of some union. So we would write materials, let's say $10. Uh, then we will write labor, let's say $12. Then we would write overheads and let's say uh, $23. And then we will go, we will, are going to get $45. So we are going to write like, like that. We will not just write. Uh, we will not just write ten plus twelve plus twenty three in a single set. That is how you are going to lose money. Please do not do that. So that is about presentation of calculations. Uh, oh, and when you write appendix one, appendix two, these appendices they have nothing to do with the appendices that are in your scenario. So in your scenario, for example, you might be given appendix one. Uh, balance sheet, appendix uh, to a uh, PNL, but your spreadsheet is different from that. You cannot refer to the appendices. You cannot name these appendices as a, that are given to you in this scenario as appendix one, two, and three. Why? The idea is as follows. Um, well, uh, let us assume that you are auditors. Yes. Well, I, I was uh, an auditor once. Uh, so as an auditor, we had some working files and these working files that were named in a certain way. So for example, if I had cash section, then it would be C1 and let's say bank um, statements reconciliation, then it would be C2 and uh, let's say uh, subsequent payments analysis and so on. And uh, these references, this appendix one, appendix two, they were internal. They were never distributed to the client. And whatever was distributed to the client is a printed version of report with maybe some attachments, uh, maybe appendix, which would be, uh, let's say, the comments of auditor, if that was in the audit engagement or whatever. Uh, so these attachments, they were named separately and they would be referring only to the report that we submitted. So let's say when we talk about um, the notes, that were there, so notes one to three, they had the references that were only within that report, not they have, didn't have any references to our internal working papers. And the, here is the same logic. So as such, your mm, uh, numbering of appendices starts within a single spreadsheet and it's going to restart at one in each and every question. Not sub-question, but question. So. For question one, you will have uh, appendix one, two, three for your parts A, B, C. For appendix uh, for question two, you will start with one again. Uh, you need to have uh, to um, have appropriate use of CB tools. Uh, well, uh, this mostly concerns uh, those who take advanced financial management. So uh, we, well, when I was a student, we had to learn the hard IRR formula. But now this our formula is written in your functionality in uh, your on your CBA platform. And unless you are asked to illustrate uh, the calculation of IRR, you just have to, you absolutely must use the formula that is provided by your computer-based exam tools. 
So you would write to that IRR formula and you would refer to some cells in brackets. So that is how we do that. Uh, it is important that your answer is easy to follow and understand uh, so that like you, uh, you have a logical structure. We do not really rely on that stress factor and so on. But you do remember that I told you that you have to have citation, conclusion, citation, conclusion right away. That is how you uh, have the better chances of, of ensuring that your answer is easy to read. Uh, we'll try not to blame, uh, as I already told you. And you know what is important? Uh, talking about style, language, and uh, clarity. To acknowledge that regardless of whether this is a, a question or a big question, uh, you have to write some formal um, communication. So when we talk about 25 mark questions or 20 mark questions, depending on the exam, uh, you will not have to write a report there. But whatever you're writing, you're writing like some sort of, uh, not a report, but like a memo. And in there, oh, you do not need to make any formatting. But as this is an official document, you're writing that to both God, to the CEO who has offered your services. So please, no, uh, you know, nothing like that. So please uh, do not use this cryptography as this uh, hieroglyphs when you want your answer. You need to use the words. Your result should be a proper text. Uh, so that these are mocks on communication. And uh, now we are going to talk about analysis and evaluation. So the marks are given to you for appropriate use of data in the appendix. Oh, that is that is so unfair. And so this is a, is a mark that is given for you, to you for basically your ability to solve the question. So for example, if part B asks you to calculate NPV, if you calculate NPV, then you get this professional marks because, well, yes, indeed, you took working capital, you took investment, you took, uh, like, let's say, tax, and uh, uh, meaning that if you got your technical marks, this is the mark that you score automatically. But if for some reason you did not approach the question because, for example, you were short in time or you forgot how to calculate NPV, uh, then you do not get the mark. So it's kind of like doubling, <laughs> you know, like in board games and card games, it's like you have something, some card that doubles your result. Well, this is the card. Uh, the next would be whether the report measures performance towards the mission and objectives and in light of best practice. That is a uh, that is something that relates to advanced performance management uh, exam, which is my beloved exam. Um, because even though I'm also a tutor for SPR and IFM, so this is APM is something that I love the most and where professional books mean the most. So the thing is that um, uh, okay, APM students, those who are ever planning to pass it, take and pass it. So uh, when you are given a report, which you need to evaluate. The thing is, the report is, is there for a reason. And usually, if we talk about top level report, the reason is to make sure that the company uh, reaches its mission, reaches its goals or objectives. So we start with saying that a uh, useful performance report is aligned with uh, the mission and objectives of the company. Then we break mission in parts. So we saw the mission of the uh, uh, ABC company can be broken down as follows. Um, let's say to provide exceptional value to shareholders, to encourage um, uh, the training and development of employees, uh, and uh, to provide best quality service to their customers. So that is how we do that. Uh, then your assessment needs to be balanced and reasoned. And remember, this first half of an hour of uh, this uh, lecture, I spent saying to you that you need to write citation, and then you need to write what it means from the point of view of theory, and then you need to write a conclusion. So that is important, not only for you to get technical marks, so that you do not list, so that you evaluate, discuss, or assess, but also to get this professional mark for your analysis and evaluation. Uh, the use of much greater than or only slightly than. So look, 
you calculate something, right? And uh, for mm, the sake of argument, lauded by Ampere, um, uh, well, because you took AFNA in financial management, so you know what MPV is. And uh, the thing is that when you comment on your result, you need to not only say that it is uh, greater than zero or smaller than zero, or this, uh, let's say, MPV is greater than the other projects or smaller than the other projects. You need to say much greater or only, sli or only slightly bigger. And you compare always with the investment. Well, you need to find some basis for comparison. Uh, if uh, it's not about MPV, you may compare that in your hand. Uh, you may compare that to revenue. So if you see that, let's say, uh, LPV of the project that is uh, given is, let's say, uh, 10,000, and 10,000 um, does not say anything. 10,000 for me, as an individual, is a huge amount of money. So I would like to get into the project that is going to bring me $10,000 of NPV. But if we talk about a company of the size of Coca-Cola, then this is a marginal result. Yes, because, well, if we talk about the investment, let's say one million. So we need to say uh, much greater than or only slightly greater than or smaller than. Okay, so these are analysis and evaluation. Well, the next important part is skepticism. Skepticism is uh, a given, the marks for skepticism are given to you for your use of however. Oh, this, however, is a great uh, technique for you to score marks because if your question is for nine marks, then, well, ultimately you have you need to have nine thoughts that are justified in something between nine to eighteen sentences. And um, well, when you need to justify something, I uh, sometimes you can uh, run out of sorts, and then you use however. So however, what can you say? However, um, well, however is usually about something that uh, will not work. So, for example, company is listed and as such, it should uh, uh, pay dividends according to its dividend policy, and uh, it can uh, not uh, um, take large portion of cash for new investment. Or, however, the company is owned by a family, and family depends on uh, the dividends as the main source of their income, and as such, uh, the shareholders will not like to take excessive risk. Uh, however, the company has cash problems, and as such, it may as well be that, um, uh, let's say, providing a discount to customers is not uh, feasible at the moment, even though it will, um, even though it will increase revenue and such profits. Uh, also, the skepticism would be for you noting that we have insufficient or not 100% relevant data. So you might say that uh, mission is only partly measured by the proposed indicator. This is something that you're going to do in your advanced performance management exam. Uh, to measure mission in all aspects uh, uh, would require too many indicators and that would lead to information overload. Or when we talk about um, audit and assurance, you may say that that would lead to the, um, well, that would uh, provide better assurance. However, we need to acknowledge the fact that it would uh, mean greater staff cost and uh, they change the shifted deadlines. Uh, so you need to acknowledge something that goes wrong. Also, uh, skepticism uh, would be that the example of skepticism would be that the idea is good, but there may be problems with implementation. So managers may not be ready or they may be reluctant to change. You can apply skepticism in a number of ways. So for example, you might say that um, maybe the data that is given to you is just the data that is easy to extract and not the data that is needed. Maybe the strategies that were offered by the board are those, by strategic board, are those that are easier to implement and not those that would uh, give company the access. So that is how we apply skepticism in our questions. The next aspect would be uh, commercial argument. Commercial argument means that we need to be able to apply uh, commercial knowledge throughout uh, our exam. So it's going to be 
citation of the scenario. So by say, citing the scenario, not only you are able to get your technical marks because technical marks are given for you for your application of knowledge to the specific company, specific problem, but also it will give you your commercial uh, acumen marks. For uh, citing industry specific, so if you are told, for example, that the, uh, that the company is engaged in car industry, so this means that the company will be heavily reliant on quality. If uh, the company comes from fashion, then uh, they would they need they need first change in design. So this means that they would uh, be willing to minimize the inventory because it can uh, go out of question of out of fashion soon and the site become obsolete. You are giving mocks uh, for uh, saying, on one hand, that this is right, or one hand, the concerns of the director valid. However, on the other hand, it's not right. So this, on one hand, on the other hand, can, uh, can be treated from different aspects of your special professionalism. Uh, if um, you are asked to, to suggest assumption, something the suggestions are appropriate. So for example, you cannot uh, suggest me as a, an individual to advertise my services on the billboard because I will just not uh, have enough money to pay for that or, or, or buy TV commercial. Or if I even if I got money and advertise on the uh, TV commercial, I will just have no do not have capacity to manage the quantity of clients that are going to come to ask for my services. Uh, so that is commercial argument that we uh, need to know about. Oh, overwhelming, I know. So these were the mocks, uh, the professional mocks that you are going to get for all of the exams other than SBL and SBR. Uh, for the rest of the exam, it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, much the same, where there are some specifics. We are going to talk about them. It's going to be a little bit faster because you already know their idea, but still. So the uh, problem with this uh, SBL exam is that, oh my God, it is for four hours. And uh, it is a, a man that uh, actually did not spend all of the time uh, writing the answer, but instead you spend time on reading the scenario and planning your answer. So that is actually very important because, well, as uh, we've already discussed, you just cannot waste your time writing something that is not asked. And uh, uh, 20 professional marks are going to be given not for something extra, but on how to avoid the answer. So the same as in uh, the previous exams. So communication marks are going to be given to you for your ability to explore, express yourself clearly and convincingly through the appropriate medium. Medium means the means of communication while being sensitive to the needs of intended audience. Commercial argument is something that is given for you to show the awareness of wider business and external factors affecting the business using commercially sound judgment and insight to resolve issues and exploit opportunities. Analysis are given, the marks for analysis are given to you for thoroughly, thoroughly investigating and researching information from a variety of sources that are given to you and logically processing it with a view to consider it for recommended and appropriate action. Science scary, right? We will go to the example, so please do not be uh, scared just yet. Evaluation are given to you for carefully and trusting situation, proposals and arguments in a balanced way using professional and ethical judgment to predict future outcomes and consequences as a basis for sound decision making. And skepticism is to probe deeply into underlying reasons for issues and problems, to question facts, opinions, and assertions, and to challenge information presented of decision making. So, as you can see from this formulation, from this um, definition, it's mostly the same as we did. Uh, in the previous fact. So, uh, but what is important? And the important is uh, the grading that is given to you. So uh, the examiner, the marker is going to read your answer and then they are going to give you marks based on 
how the following uh, the, the professional marks that were promised to you. And uh, let me give you an example of professional marks in the SVL. Professional marks serve for demonstrating communication skills and ensuring that the statement solves the key issues arising from the bribery allegations and is satisfactory to both the stakeholders of DSB and NUSA. <clears throat> so that is two marks. Uh, another example, so in ASBEL, professional marks are given to be given in chunks of two. Professional skill marks are available for demonstrating analytical skills relating to uh, division's environment. Professional skill marks are available for demonstrating evaluation skills relating to neural and division's performance. Uh, four marks is quite rare. And uh, professional marks are for demonstrating commercial argument skills in ensuring that the statement explains the key role of the CEO as requested and is satisfactory to both stakeholders and of uh, DSB and uh, uh, new song. Uh, okay, so look, we are given here either two or four marks, and when we are going to be marked, uh, zero marks will be given if your uh, answer does not address this professional marks at all. Um, the full mark is going, the full professional mark is going to be given to you if the answer is uh, addressing the issue uh, very well. If it is quite well, but not fantastic, then you are going to be given two thirds of the marks that are promised. So it's either uh, two thirds of two marks. So it's 175, 175, 166, or uh, two thirds of four marks, um, which is uh, uh, what's two and 66. And if you are not doing that very well, not very well, but doing that at least somehow, you will be given one third of the marks that were promised to you. So two thirds of the marks uh, or fourth, um, if you were promised two marks, so you will get something like 0.66. If uh, you were promised four marks, then you will get something like uh, one and uh, 33, uh, 1.33. So that is how you do that in ASBIL. ASBIL is tricky and it's very special and it's very uh, different, but the idea of you scoring those analytical marks, evaluation marks, commercial, is the same as we've discussed <clears throat> in the first part about uh, how, how the marks are allocated for, let's say, common ordinary exams. And uh, the way you need to answer your question is uh, in the same way as we discussed how your answer should be presented. Now, uh, a little bit left, so just bear with me a little bit longer. Professional marks. Professional marks in strategic business reporting. Well, with our strategic business reporting, professional marks are going to be awarded for the quality of ethical discussions. Uh, or they may be or rewarded for the quality of the discussion. And please pay attention to what is the part that these professional marks are referring to. So uh, what is the idea? If uh, your professional, if you are said that you are given two professional marks for part two of sub-question I of this question, then I would really suggest that you go to the question. So if for example, you are short in time and you think about which part of the question to attempt and not to attempt. Attempt the one that gives you professional marks. Uh, well, quality of discussion, what it does it mean? It means like all of the first part that we've attempted when we talked about that you need to use citation, then you need to talk about, oh, sorry, uh, spoiler alert. Citation that you need to talk about the theory. So what it means, what is the uh, line of the standard you are applying and then accounting conclusion. Recognize, do not recognize, debit, credit, expense, and so on. Uh, if um, the question is about whether this should be recognized or not, uh, should be recognized as that or not. So you will need to think about, you need to analyze. So you will be given 
professional marks on saying on one hand and the ability to talk about the scenario and on the other hand. Alrighty, uh, in very rare circumstances, your professional marks will be given to you for your ability to reference the relevant IFRS standards. If your professional marks are going to be about that, if they specifically say that you need to reference IFRS standards, then this is a huge hint that uh, there will be several of them, and most likely it will be something about IS8, which is the change in accounting policies, uh, estimates and errors, and uh, uh, IS10, which is a subsequent event. So please pay attention, and uh, then you need to, like, number like reference to the standards but please never in SBR say that this is accorded to IFRS because your full exam is about IFRS so there is just no use of saying that is it's really unprofessional say that according to IFRS and it is really unprofessional to say obviously please do not use the word obviously uh, already, so uh, that is uh, what you need to do. And when we talk about ethical discussion, I know that many students are afraid of ethical questions. And here's a short bonus, and it relates not only to SBR, because actually there's ethical principles. They are tested in the variety of exams. Uh, so, for example, they can happen in SBL or in uh, audit. So uh, the ethical principles are professional competence and you care. This is that you know your stuff, that you know the subject matter, you've read this uh, chapter of the book. Uh, objectivity. Objectivity means that you do not allow bias or conflict of injuries or undue influence of others. So uh, from the point of view of the SEC, that you do not prefer the needs of the organization over the needs of other stakeholders. Well, for example, when we say whether we should uh, uh, kind of adjust uh, uh, the financial statements uh, for uh, the bank to give us the loan, then we say that it is not objective. Uh, we should not overweigh the benefits of uh, our company, of our organization. Uh, we should not weigh them over the interest of bank to get the report that is unbiased and free of error. Uh, the next would be professional behavior. Uh, professional behavior means that you need to comply with relevant laws and regulations and avoid any just any action that discredits your profession. Integrity means to be straightforward and honest in all our professional relationships, so not to lie. And confidentiality to respect the confidentiality of information received acquired. And yes, this is their like official definition. You you explain the confidentiality by using the word confidentiality. But anyways, I wanted to show you the answers of how you do that, how you apply the principles. Uh, so the idea would be uh, something did something wrong. This is the breach of the principle, and then quite often you are asked what to do about that. If the directors and the keyword is knowingly stated liabilities wrong, it means that they have breached the integrity principle, which is to be straightforward and honest in all professional and business relationship. So look, you need to sign the scenario. And of course, like the scenario, it will not be that they did some that. So that's why you use the word if. So you sign if knowingly, and this is a breach of integrity. And this is the definition of integrity. Even though CFO is employed by ABC company, is employed is uh, the most important word, uh, ACCA's code of ethics requires her to be objective. Uh, objective is that principle, which means not to allow bias and conflict of interest. This is the definition that you need to write of the principle. Uh, or undue influence of others to override professional or business judgments. This means that by trying to manipulate ratios used to um, come used in the covenant, therefore is not acting objectively. And this is the situation from this scenario. It seems that CFO is unaware of a forest nine requirement. This is when uh, uh, in the scenario we see that uh, they did something wrong, they accounted for something wrong. 
However, CCA is called for six states that uh, ACC members should act with professional competence, which means to maintain professional knowledge and skills at a level required. Uh, this is the definition uh, to ensure that a client or employer receives a competent professional service. So again, uh, what was the breach? What uh, the citation? What was the breach? What was the principle that was breached? And what does it mean? ICC members have access to sensitive information uh, and they should act with confidentiality, which means not to allow third parties to access uh, sensitive information. By telling his wife about upcoming merger, this is the citation of the scenario, uh, Mr. Popper breaches the principle. By implying that the accountant might lose the job, so this is um, a threat, should not, uh, should not comply with the director's instructions to uh, state something incorrectly. The directors are threatening, and this means that it is contrary to professional behavior principle. So that is the name of the principle. And uh, that is the definition, which is to comply with all relevant laws and regulations and avoid any action that discredits the profession. So if you're going to take your SBR exam, and you need to talk about uh, ethics, well, you will need to write this ethical part. Just try to like a little bit memorize and actually in your exam, you, it will be easier for you to just revisit that. Uh, it will be fresh knowledge, uh, recent uh, knowledge, and that will allow you to answer the question on ethical principles correctly. Well, yes, and if the question asks you for action, please do not forget to state the action, which is uh, to explain, uh, to remind the code of ethics, uh, to talk to the superior, to uh, advise, to address to those charged with governance, and to finally uh, to contact, contact the HSA ethics helpline, or finally to resign if the matter is unsolved. Wow, look, well, that was a very fast talking of this professional marks. And I know that this is overwhelming. Uh, so great thing is that you can revisit that, that you can re-watch this video over again, maybe at a lower speed. I just wanted to tell you as much as I could. Uh, and these are the techniques that are going to help you to score your professional marks. And what I suggest you to do is to uh, come up with a plan, like five to-dos that you are going to uh, apply uh, in your exam to ensure that you score at least some of professional marks, such as, right, on one hand or the other hand. Don't forget to criticize to get your skepticism mark. Or let's say, don't forget to uh, write report layout if the question specifically asks you for report. And that would ensure that you have the strong chances of actually passing the exam rather than to just take it back. So good luck with them.